Teten students, this is your president speaking. As you may have heard, an unfortunate incident has occurred this morning in the female identifying bathroom at the Susan Brown Miller Sisterhood Dormitory. One female student had reported to have seen, and I quote, a large man dressed in Victoria's secret lingerie, hanging from the ceiling light fixture, masturbating furiously with a zucchini inserted in his, well, you get the point. This abhorrent behavior will not be tolerated at our university. And as such, the female student in question was immediately expelled for her intolerance of alternative lifestyle choices. Is that a choice shit, Lord? We were born this way. My, my apologies for, well, everything. To prevent further similar offenses, we have decided to conduct an emergency and mandatory gender identity course hosted by our own gender studies professor, Poopsie Mingofluffin, and with assistance by our interim professor, Triggers McNickers. Now, Mr. McNickers, we cannot afford a repeat of last week. Your precipitation of the greatest mass triggering ever experienced on our campus led to our infirmary's shortage of smelling salts, Valium, and one therapy dog was literally hugged to death. Yep. Such brave warriors for justice! Professor Mingofluffin. Uh, yeah? You will be in charge here while I'm away from my surveillance room. I am to orchestrate a student stop and frisk for the next hour. There have been reports of sidewalk chalk used to promote presidential candidates that we don't approve of. And if we are to remain the most genetically diverse institution of higher learning in America, we cannot allow a diversity of opinion. Oopsie, you may now proceed. Thank you, comrade. Okay, class, this is a crash course on gender identity. Anyone can attend, for this is a safe space for all, but our goal here is to teach tolerance and awareness to those who identify as... Cisgender. Cis what? Cisgender. It describes those certain few who feel that their gender matches their biological sex. Oh, just a select few of them out there, is there? Hmm? That's right. And when was the last time you actually left the university campus? Are we, like, talking in years here? Oh, forget it. You said enough. Now, class, remember that Triggers here is on probation for his little meltdown he had last week. So if he carries on again with his usual intolerance, we have a new, airtight, soundproof, safe zone in the back for the benefit of your emotional health. Depending on how airtight it is, it would make it a benefit of mine as well. Uh, Professor? Yes? I just want to clarify something. Okay. Are you saying we don't have to be here if we're not normal? What do you mean by normal? I'm sorry. What I meant to say was oppressive cis scum. Oh, right, 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 right. Yes. I was wondering if I could be excused from this course then. Huh? Well, you see, I identify as a pre-op trans lesbian with heteroactive leanings, I guess. So you're a man who says he's a woman who likes to screw with a woman like a man? Pretty much. Check yourself, triggers. Well, off you go then. Really? Yep. Sweet. And Professor McNickers apologizes for his cishet privilege. No, I don't. I'll be in the girls' locker room if you need me. Okay, have fun. And stay brave! Now, this morning's unfortunate incident, as our president described, would never have happened at our beloved school if we had made this course mandatory for all first-year students years ago. Her intolerance was nothing less than a hate crime, an example of transphobia. Nah, I don't think he's transgender at all. Yeah, the guy jerking off in the ladies' room? He's probably into genophilia. Yeah, he's probably some straight guy who gets his kicks from dressing up like a girl. Either out of the thrill of breaking some social taboo, or out of humiliation within the presence of a woman. Typically a dominatrix. Hey, I'm not judging the guy based solely on that. Hell, I'm not even saying he accurately represents the BDSM community, okay? He's more of a sex criminal than anything else. The way he exposes himself to unsuspecting girls like that. Hey, I'm not one to preach against perversions. I have a few of my own. But I neither politicize them, nor parade them out in public with little regard for strangers. I practice mine right where they belong. In a damp and dark basement. 
I feel as if I've lost you along the way. What are you really on about? Look, all I'm saying is that those who are suffering from true gender dysphoria will not appreciate being lumped in the same category as some kinkster. Okay, that's enough benevolent transphobia from you today. You didn't listen to a word I just said, did you? Nope. Standard. Back to today's lesson. I am here to expand your understanding of the gender spectrum beyond the social constructs of male and female by introducing to you transgender awareness. You speak of transgenderism as if it's a third gender. That prefix trans is very telling here. It represents a changing from one condition to another. It's not a destiny unto itself. Look, these people are suffering from unfortunate medical anomalies, be it genetic mutation or prenatal underdevelopment, and they feel alienated enough as it is. So why would you prevent their desired assimilation with freakish labels? Are you finished? Well, my question wasn't rhetorical. Well, I could always get the president in here, and he could answer it for you. Nope. I'm fine. You sure now? I get it. Okay. Skepticism has no place in an institution of higher learning. Mm hmm Huh. Anyways, the gender spectrum, as we refer to it, is so diverse that identities include both the disassociation from identity altogether, such as asexual, a genetic dead end, got it, and the encompassing of all the identities, such as pansexual. Wait, pan what? Pansexual. Fetish for cookingware? Pansexuality is the sexual attraction, romantic love, or emotional attraction towards people of any biological sex, gender, or gender identity. That's not a gender. And this means you'll pork anybody. I knew a guy like that in the army, especially after a few beers. Pansexuals are an important ally in our fight for gender inclusivity because they are open to relationships with people who do not identify as strictly men or women. Pansexuality rightfully rejects the gender binary. The gender binary? Yes. Oh, you mean the mammalian reproductive dichotomy that's been very successful for the last 160 million years? Gee, I see no harm in needlessly dismantling that. Are, are you trying to silence my marginalized voice here? You know, you're a tenured professor, right? I am a crusader for the emancipation of all oppressed genders under the patriarchy. Whose yearly income is more than most working class men? I don't see why that's important. Funded by government grants? Your point is? Paid for by mostly male taxpayers? Strangely run patriarchy, is it not? Was that a microaggression? Nope. I'll just stand here then. Good. Keep it quiet. Thank you. Bathing in the glowing warmth of whatever privilege you seem to think I have. As your subordinate here at the university. Okay, I'm finished. Anyways, as I was saying, not only is there a gender spectrum, but there's also a wide variety of preferred pronouns that will appropriately identify what that gender and sexual preference is. And I guess maybe a biological sex as well, if that's important to you. God forbid anyone properly breeds. Anyway! Such examples of preferred pronouns include he, she, they, zir, z, here, peer, v, z, zem, te, si, a, fe, Can I interject te. something? Hold on, I'm not finished. M, tem, phlegm, zip, zorp, zirs, dum, dang, dang, ork, pork, we, me, flim, flame, Ping, zing, zong, pong, dong, thong. And my preferred pronoun cannot be pronounced at all. It is a nameless symbol which I've drawn for you here on my left. You sexually identify as Prince? I refuse to allow my identity to be constrained by the communicative limitations of mere phonetics. You know, it looks a little more complicated than necessary. Here, allow me to modify this just a little bit. You know, in order for the peasant normals to better understand who they're dealing with. Okay, let me remove this line here, and uh, draw it over here, and uh, get rid of that, and uh, extend this out a bit, and uh, voila! Can I ask you one serious question here? If everyone's pronoun is as unique as their first name, what would be the point in using them at all? The whole point of a pronoun is to allow conversation to quickly flow without having to repeat the subject's proper name with every reference. Can, can you just... Check your cis mansplaining just enough to allow me to continue on with my lecture here, Triggers. Hmm? Well, allow me to apologize for my usage of the Socratic method. Thank you. Apology accepted. And my penis. Now, back to the gender binary. To say that there are only two genders is not only absurd, it is also dangerous. 
To assume that we are all either male or female is the leading cause of gender dysphoria. Said no actual tranny ever. Triggers! Yes? I wasn't referring to you. Oh, I see what you did there. <sighs> As you can see here, so colorfully displayed on this chart to my right, there are literally dozens of identities that so many brave members of the LGBTQIAAPKXBlue5Z8% and pound sign community have come forward to a lightness of. And within each major gender category, there are several subtypes as well. Okay, hold on here. Huh? Your chart is rather misleading. Just because a phenomenon has variations, whether real or imaginary is another topic, that doesn't mean that these variations come in equal ratios. Here, let me adjust the pie chart according to population percentages so that you can have a better understanding of just how socially relevant your cause is. Socially? Socially relevant? Okay, let me erase this line here. And uh, draw this one over here. And reshade this area right here. And, uh, okay, here. Are you suggesting that my cause for gender equality is a joke? What I'm saying is that teaching your misguided cause to impressionable boys and girls will ferment even further confusion and disharmony among heterosexuals than what feminism started 40 years ago. It's obvious that sexuality is more than just procreation for our species. It is also an important means to establish intimate bonds between two or more people, which certainly helps with cohabitation. This is why we have recently grown tolerant of homosexuality and other alternative lifestyles. But this love knows no bounds principle does not overshadow the fundamental purpose of sexuality. The fact is, the vast majority of us are normal men and women who embrace the natural differences between men and women, who understand how men and women complement each other, and most importantly, who are meant to create children together. This world isn't just for you, you know. It is big enough for all of us. Indeed. But your so-called gender spectrum is creating more problems than solutions for actual transsexuals as well. Here, let me quickly draw your pie chart showing just how ridiculously conflated this transgender activist community is. Okay, let me uh, draw the circle. And draw this one here. And another one down here. And shade these areas right here. And, um, finish! You see that largest slice? That's you! Look, I, I understand that teenagers and young adults want to stand out in the crowd and be honest, okay? Biologically, it is a critical time in their lives to find mating partners. But because of their youth and inexperience, they haven't yet earned any social status, established any positive reputation, or accrued any discernible wealth. So they have to rely on other means to turn heads in their direction. I'm a Gen Xer myself, and back in the 1990s, we established our identity through subcultures based on music genres, clothing styles, lingo, even how we dance. And the more obscure our clique or favorite artist was from the mainstream limelight, the more we felt edgy, cool, hip, and, well, special. Where are you going with this? This whole millennial trend of finding the right gender identity that fits you, like you're buying a new pair of footwear or something, serves the same status-seeking purpose as when I dressed as a goth and listened to industrial noise bands who had a total of, like, 12 avid followers. This may seem serious business to you now. It always does to the adolescent mind, but in 10 years tops, most of you will look back on this identity experimentation with laughter and mild embarrassment, and you'll chalk up this phase of your life as simply the folly of youth. Why the hell would we do that? Because any gender besides male or female is biologically unnecessary. <gasps> it's not that gender, by any legitimate scientific standard, is a social construct, but rather your definition of what gender is, is. <laughs> Don't you find it disconcerting that it was the quack psychologist John Money who not only spearheaded this academic distinction between biological sex and gender identity, but also destroyed David Reimer's life after his failed gender reassignment experiment, trying to prove that behavioral and psychological distinctions between men and women are primarily learned. David Reimer, may he rest in peace, certainly proved otherwise. Everything that your kind does, Triggers, 
And you don't even have the common courtesy to apologize for your existence in spite of I think it's time for plan B. Feel. I am not about to stand here and be subjected to ignorant facts any longer, especially those from a damn dirty steak eye. O. M. F. G. How dare you assume that I am who I appear to be rather than how I feel I am. You said it yourself that you were born with a dog and liked banana. I hide my true identity out of fear of persecution. From what? Not the capitalistic cisgendered white. Yeah, all of those buzzwords. Yeah. I don't believe you. But is it not your core tenet to listen and believe the words of those more oppressed than you? You see, I also hid my true self from you in order to test your faith in the cause. Are you telling me that you don't really possess a tallywhacker? I possess no genitals. But what about your pasty white skin? Underneath this puppet belt, there is no color. But are you not able to utilize all of your limbs and faculties? I am the most disabled of all. I was born without DNA. But what is your true gendered identity? Speak now and torment me no more with your ambiguous words. I identify as, as, as everything. What? And nothing. But, but how can this be? I am the Alpha and the Omega of the progressive stack. <gasps> I am the drowning, silent voice from within your echo chambers. I am the Immaculate One, cleansed of any privilege to check. Can it be that the prophecy has come to pass? Has our long-awaited intersectional savior finally arrived? Do not speak over me, shitlord! For my voice is the most marginalized of all! I'm sorry! I mean not to trigger you, my lord, nor question your lived-in experience. I only humbly ask of you to lead us to the promised land. The promised land? A land where we are all free to live by our own truthiness? Yes. A land where our physical and biological limitations do not apply? Yes. A land where you will never feel inadequate for any reason ever again? Yes! Behold! The door to Femtopia. Uh, are you saying this? Yeah, the one, the one back there. This one right here? Yep. Go on in. Quickly now, and close the door behind you. We don't want any rapey males to gaze within. It, it's a bit dark in here. Our world is forever lit by the twilight of our beloved Menses giving moon goddess. Are you saying you're not worthy enough to behold it? No, no, no. Uh, of course not. I, I'm just not finding anything other than cleaning supplies in here. Do not judge my people based on their appearances. Oh, I'm sorry. Thumb up is a trans-Nubian, huh? lesbian, new Black Panther oh. fighting for the eradication of whiteness. Oh, I can feel the dreadlocks. The push broom is an asexual, oh. red-stocking, red femme Ooh. fighting for the eradication of maleness. Love the spiky flat top, sister. An industrial strength garbage bag oh my. is a Wahhabist Muslim woman oh. fighting for the eradication of all infidels. Your burqa, it's beautiful. For the first time in my life, I am not choking on the overpowering scent of testosterone. It's like my mind is finally free from needing to make logical sense. So enjoy! Enjoy a world free of oppression, free of microaggressions, free of contrary opinions, free of anything fun and humorous and sexy and sing. Hey, maybe we can form a ukulele and drum circle later and play, play until our menstrual cycles become in sync. Whoops! Ow, 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 ow. Oh, 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 I bet the patriarchy intentionally left that there. What a goofy cult. Okay, class, I will now teach you something never lectured at the school before. The four fundamental steps of the scientific method. Ooh, what's that? I can do anything. I can reach any goal today I can do what I want I can be what I want